by Mike Tyson. Calzaghi's absorbing a hook. Mike Tyson's tagged again by an uppercut. Not the most accurate uppercut you'll see. Tyson's power is dynamic, truly dynamic. The kind of stuff that can end this fight early on. Yeah, it is, but there's a danger to that, too. If he doesn't land early on, if he doesn't have his way early on, maybe he gets discouraged. Body shot lands on the right. How about that left that hand? Tyson scores with a jab. Takes a step back, then the counter punch by Calzaghi. Very similar to what you see Floyd Mayweather do. You know, make a miss, pull that shoulder back, and then come right back with the counter. Calzaghi's putting forth that hard work he did in training camp there, landing a crisp combination. Tyson's right hand scores well that time. Blocks that punch. Tyson's hit by a counter punch there. Will you look at this? Look at this pace that these two are fighting at so early in the fight. Teddy, each man oh. must have been determined to think they can get the other one out of here early. Yeah, I want to see who blinks first, though. That's what's interesting to me. Who changes? They can't both keep this up. Iron Mike lands the left. Good. On the mark to the body with a left hook. That followed up a right hand. Able to dismiss his opponent's shot, and then comes back with an uppercut. Come to the end of the round. Always interesting to see how things will play out in our fights. Teddy, it's always great anticipation when we come sit ringside in the buildup of what's going to happen. Yeah, it is. And it's always great having a little electricity in the crowd. You know, it helps. I know it helps me with the broadcast to know that you have these passionate fans that are around. There's no need to fight his style. Combination by Joe Calzaghe. Mike Tyson's opponent knows exactly what the game plan can be now. That counter punch landed with some success. Calzaghe is able to avoid that punch. That is boxing 101. A nice, crisp combination by Mike Tyson. to erode away that body with the combination punching. Keep moving, keep moving. Good looking right hand after he got hit. Keep working the body. On the mark, the counter punch by Joe Calzaghe. He scored well after being hit himself. That is exactly what the corner wanted to see. A good combination punch by Calzaghe. They trade shots. He comes back with a right hand. Both guys have a lot to be proud of with their performances in this round so far, and they still want to give more. What an encore in this final minute. If you were a kid, you would feel that you're on one of those rides at Space Mountain. I mean, it's just extraordinary. Calzaghe's fully committed to utilizing the jab, and I think it's working out well for him early on. Well, it is. It's kind of like, you know, sending static out there. You, you want to scramble somebody's radio signal. You know, that's what the jab does. It scrambles your radio signal, or at least in boxing terms, it throws the other guy's rhythm off. Crashes home with a hook. Mike Tyson's the kind of boxer that wants to do just that. Find the target, get the combination working, land both punches. And we come to the end of round number two. Now, Zaggy's defense is going to need to shine when he gets back out there. I mean, just look at the close-up of that cut we're seeing. Yeah, he's got to use his legs. You're right, Joe. He's got to get out there and buy some time for those medicines to work. Tyson's 
movements really helping him out, avoiding that punch. Able to bring the hook down low. Tyson's not skipping a beat. He came out just the way he finished up last round. Yeah, what I like is that he's a thick and man fighter, and his corner gave him probably good advice. They know that the opponent only had 60 seconds to recover, and they're figuring it wasn't enough time. Now, Zaggy's making for a tough target there. He gets away from that punch. He digs in, trying to bank away body shots with the combo. Comes right back with a shot of his own. He tried to nab him up top, but was unable to connect. Halfway through this round. Calzaghi's showing you that sublime skill right now with that two-punch combo. Taking a shot of his own. A crushing two-punch combo by Mike Tyson. Tyson's doing good damage with the combination punching. Well, right there's a good example of the benefit of combination punching. You miss the first or the second, the third and the fourth, they land. Double jab upstairs. Now his opponent got away. What a big shot. Late going here this round, and he goes down. Can he survive it? Zaggy's back up on his feet. What will he look like in the next few moments of this fight? That's the big question. He missed with that headshot. And we come to the end of the round. Deep breath, deep breath. Tyson's enjoying a big lead here, Teddy, and we talk about this often as we begin round number four, up three to zip on your scorecard. When you have scored a knockdown that early in the fight, a real hole for your opponent to try to overcome. Yeah, because now he has to start taking chances that maybe weren't in the game plan. And as he takes chances, gets a little reckless, and as you're seeing, gets caught more. How about a return to sender with the left hand? Big, big shot he just scored with. Combination. Joe Calzaghi's down. He's going to have to beat the count.
Good evening, everybody. Joe Tessitore alongside Teddy Atlas, and welcome to the New York Arena in Midtown Manhattan for tonight. All the talk, all the hype, now the fight. Round one, scheduled for 10. Return to sender. He gives him back one of his own. Mike Tyson's corner is going to be all over him. And yet another big shot comes in. Mike Tyson's on the deck. <laughs> Mike Tyson rises up after going down here today. Protecting his head well with his guard. Mike Tyson turns that hook in well. Took a shot, now he gives a left. I like the way he went up top that time with the hook. Tried to land that upstairs and was off the mark. Boy, sharp two-punch combination by Mike Tyson. Tyson's right hand working well that time. He scored well. Good work defensively by Evander Holyfield. Plus, he landed that counter punch. Yeah, and he forced him to punch. He made him, he threw it out of him, and then he timed him beautiful. Gets rid of that effort. Good accurate work there after blocking that blow. Holyfield's movement helped out there. He avoided that punch. Targeting that head with the combination punching. Holyfield's really walking a tightrope here. I mean, that's a foul. That's a headbutt right there. He could get deep too. There it is! And he goes down again. Will he get up from this?
Good evening, everybody. Joe Tessitore and Teddy Atlas welcoming you to Chicago and the famed Aragon Ballroom for tonight's main event. Ten rounds of middleweight action. Great atmosphere here tonight. You talk to everybody ringside, and they expect this one to be a barn burner. Room. Let's have a good clean fight. Touch them up. They are underway. Scheduled for 10 rounds tonight between these two. Good doubling up of the jab by Marvin Hagler. Marvelous Marvin Hagler in action here tonight, Teddy. What should we see out of him? Well, what a lot of people don't think, they see his chiseled body, they think he's just gonna come out and get a seek and destroy missile coming at you. He looks you over a little bit and then figures out how he's gonna take you apart. I figure the first round is gonna come out probing with that southpaw jab, defensively alert, and again, taking a peek at you. Hayes is getting himself into the mix now, landing that left hand. A headshot blocked. Hayes is missing the mark by a mile. That just was nowhere to be found. That was nice. He just drew the punch from his opponent and then a good counter by Marvin Hagler. Yeah, like running through the rain without getting wet. Beautiful. Halfway through round number one. There's another left hand from him. Hagler's giving his opponent headaches here now. He's throwing punches, but he's able to block them away. Not that, not that marvelous Marvin Hagler needs a lot of it, but if he was to get one piece of advice in facing this style, this unorthodox style he's facing tonight, what would it be? Well, one thing is they'd say, hey, don't forget you're unorthodox, you're a southpaw. <laughs> be a southpaw. Yeah, take advantage of that. You know, move to the southpaw direction, to the right. You know, and be a southpaw. Let him deal with something that he hasn't seen too much. Targeted two punch combo by Hayes. So the round comes to an end. Joe Tessitore and Teddy Atlas sitting with you, Rings. I don't know you had a very busy week before you flew here out to broadcast this fight, doing your charitable contributions back in Staten Island with the Dr. Theodore Atlas Foundation. Yeah, thank you for bringing that up, Joe. We did well. We had our dinner, our yearly dinner, where we're able to raise money to help people that are in need, people that have nowhere else to go for help, whether it's a mother that can't pay the cancer treatment for a seven-year-old daughter, and we're able to pick up that insurance. But the thing that I want to take a second to thank everybody for is that it's a collective effort. It's all the people that allow us the resources to go out there and help those people. Hayes is swinging and missing like he's at bat right there. That punch was nowhere near his opponent. Scores with the combo to the head. Hayes' knowledge of the game is showing through. Three ways to defend, one of them is to block. He did it there well. Nice work, the left hand to the head. Hagler's defense is paying off now. Good shot to the head with that right hand. the next time he throws a punch because he just got hit by a good solid counter. Now he's putting his punches together, the combination upstairs. Halfway through round number two. Turns over that hook upstairs. Teddy, do you think the sport needs a national or international governing body? Yeah, it's the only major sport, at least it used to be a major sport, that doesn't have that. 
and there's no unilateral control. And when there's no unilateral control across the board, well, you have too many spots, spots that are weak for the sport, spots that do not serve the sport. Hagler able to block that punch. Not able to land the headshot. Zoning in on that gut. Combination punch down. getting back up to his feet after being knocked down. Can you believe that? If there were 30 more seconds of that round, I don't know that he survived. But now, he gets the benefit of the 60-second break. Yeah, he gets the benefit, and he's got to show his experience now to kind of have a short memory. I know that sounds crazy, but forget about what happened and find a way to have confidence. Find something to hold on to going out for the next round. Look at him. He's so fucking tired. He's got nothing left. Listen. Double up your punches. Keep the lead, right? Yeah, I need that. Throw that has got to hope that these 60 seconds are going to pay off for him here. Went down hard in that last round. He's got to gather himself because you know his opponent's going to come right after him when that bell rings. There's the old one-two from Keyshawn Hayes. Nice work offensively. Hayes is being so very effective, punching in combination. And that's what you want. He's got pretty good hand speed. Might as well use that hand speed. No better way to use it than putting them together. A little give and take, and here comes the left hand. Good step back, counter punch there. Beautiful. Hayes' combination punching is working well here. Taking too many punches, oh. hands up. Downstairs with a right hand. Took a shot, now he gives a left. What a great job, he gave one right back in return. Nice work by Hayes. He just missed that shot up top. Hayes is so dangerous with that accuracy. Oh! Up off the deck and now in control. He scores a knockdown of his own. And he turned it around because when his opponent scored the knockdown, he got a little careless, a little lazy. But I also recognize that he's in good shape. That's one of the reasons he got up. Good double jab by Marvin Hagler. Good right hand by Hayes. You can see he's trying to score up top, but off the mark there. Zones in on that overhand right. How you doing? And that does it for this round. Your hands up, keep working. Keep your hands up, all right? Keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. Don't look for jumping punches, okay? Double up your punches. I want to see Tom. So far, just 
just a chance to catch our breath as we start round number four. They've traded knockdowns. Now you have them up two rounds to one, Teddy. What's your thinking there? My thinking is that the corners, they have indigestion. You know, they're looking for a little Maalox or something to settle their stomach. But the audience, they're having a good time because they know it can happen again. Committing now to the left hand. Good straight shot. Hayes' best asset is a little bit of an unorthodox athleticism. And right now, his opponent can't deal with it. No, he's frustrating him. I mean, you're right. You know, being awkward the way he is, that is really what gives his opponents troubles because they get so confused by that, so irritated by that, they get out of their fight. Good combination to the body. seconds to go in round number four. He took a shot, but he gives one of his own. A left-hand scores. Not precise at all by Marvin. Oh, a big shot comes home for him. Well, I don't like the way Hatton looks this time. He is down again, and he's got to beat the count. His opponent is probably wishing this would never be the case, but Hagler is getting right back up and right back into this fight. Little bit of space now to get away from the ropes. Marvin Hagler's looking. The referee gives him a warning for headbutting. Hayes' three-punch combination there is going to impress the judges. Fourth round now with its last 10 seconds. Good clean shot moving. returning fire. Well done by Hayes. And round four comes to an end. Hagler's company is going to earn his pay for sure. That is a bad gash. And I'm wondering what he's using in there. You know, you can only use certain things, avatine, adrenaline, and thrombus. I'm wondering if he's using illegal things right now because that's the kind of cut that tempts you to use crazy glue. front of him, but I don't know that there's any new hope. He's been down numerous times tonight, including that last round. You never know what a person's capable of when they're pushed to the brink, but this would be very unlikely. It would be spectacular. Right back downstairs. A well-placed left hand up top. Hagler's not throwing the power punches, Teddy. What would you say to him? Well, first of all, I would say to him, what do you think, that he's going to make a deal with you? If you don't hit him hard, he won't hit you hard? No, no, it doesn't work like that, my friend. He's going to get confidence now. He's going to take advantage of this. Huge right hand comes crashing home. Look at that. Sometimes timing can beat speed. That was the case as marvelous Marvin Hagler ate a well-timed power punch and went down. business component to this game here, this boxing game. And the business component is, yeah, you got to win, but you want to win spectacularly. You want to get people interested, excited. He just...
Good evening, I'm Joe Tessitore alongside Teddy Atlas, and we welcome you to the famed Boardwalk Hall in Atlantic City, New Jersey, where so many great fights have gone on through the years. Our main event should be a good one tonight. Ten rounds of heavyweights. A lot of talk heading into tonight's matchup. Every fight. Round number one is now underway. All the talk is done. It is simply time to fight. He digs in with a left hand to the body. Solid right by Mike Tyson. The other day when we were talking to Andre Bishop, he said to have success in this fight, I have to land combinations. He landed a good one there. Not hitting his mark there going upstairs. On. Takes one to give one. He comes back with a right hand. That's a nice combination. Left hook to the body, right hand. And he returns on that exchange. Teddy, what role can the fans play on the fighters, the atmosphere of the arena, when they know there's two guys meeting up that can dance? An immature fighter, a less experienced fighter, can get caught up. He can try to satisfy the audience. That's a quick way to be going in the shower earlier than you wanted to. 90 seconds to go here in this round. See, Andre Bishop, that training really paid off. Just back to basics with the one, two, boom, boom. Went to the body there, but unable to connect. Tyson's defense. Is it ever good? Look at how easy he's able to block those punches. Banking away a body shot with the right hand. Bishop's left, working well that time. Scored well up top. So many times you hear of an early round where they're just feeling each other out. No way. Not these guys. Straight to action. Well, if they can keep this up, they're both going to have headaches, but we're going to have a special one on our hands. Final 10 seconds. Good flush one two jab and a straight hand by Andre Bishop. We come to the end of the round. Joe Tessitore alongside Teddy Atlas. And looking up at these corners, you can see the cutman obviously getting to work as they do after every round. What makes a great cutman? Well, he's got to have the right medicines, the right coagulants to stop that. Usually avatine, thrombin, adrenaline. But the most important thing, Joe, is he has to be calm. He has to be able to identify where that cut is. Maybe there's more than one cut. So you got to be calm enough to see the whole picture, the whole landscape, clean it off, put pressure on it, get that medicine in there, keep your fighter from getting excited. And then you need a fighter who's going to get on his wheels a little bit, give the medicine a chance to work. Targeting a left hand down low. A little something for his opponent after getting tagged. Bishop's landing a combination here. That's what he does when he's at his very best. Mike Tyson's bang by an uppercut. Takes one, but gives one. Good work by Andre Just Bishop. Like Just like that. Tyson's putting his punches together now. That's a nice combination. Andre Bishop's defense is now serving him well. Nice job blocking that punch. See him trying to cut down that tree with a well-placed right hand. Bishop's doing well here with that two-punch combination. Halfway through this round here. Good exchange, he fires back. To the head he goes with a left hand. Mike Tyson's on the wrong end of a razor sharp hook. The final minute of a round that feels like 30 minutes, not three minutes. And this is the kind of fight where you just don't want to have a loser. They're both winners. That's great stuff. He fires one right back after taking one. Gotta love the word by Andre Bishop. A nice block by Andre Bishop. What a forceful hook by Andre Bishop. Nothing there on the punch by Mike Tyson. 
He gives as well as he takes. You saw it on that exchange. Good, solid right hand land. Big, big shot comes crashing home. Andre Bishop blocked by that power punch. Bishop is down. Jab, move him. Keep him away from him, all right? I need you to keep moving. And round number three is underway. A well-targeted jab that time. And that's exactly what you need when you want to stay on the outside. Something to keep you away from your opponent. Putting forth that hard work he did in training camp there, landing a crisp combination. This is just beautiful to watch. Watch how he just links one to the next, Teddy. A beautiful sequence, almost like musical notes being played. Well, exactly. It's a nice tune because it just follows. One, as you said, follows the other. Nice and smooth. Really a lot of consistency from him with the right hand. And you see what he can do when he sends that right to the head. Oh, that's a huge power shot to the head by Andre Bishop. Doubles up the jab to the head. I like that step back right there. Just enough to be out of danger, but still close enough to then land the counter. Well, that's what happens when you have that kind of experience. You're calm enough to know that range. Know where the beginning of the punch and the end of the punch is. Oh, a nice two-punch combo by Andre Bishop. Bishop's right hand did a nice job that time. That worked well for him. That's a serious power punch he just landed to the head. Good two-punch combo by Andre Bishop. Mike Tyson's impressing the judges and himself with that right hand. And now he's targeting upstairs. Ten clicks of the talk. Blocks away that headshot. Come on, Double jab fuck. right to the face. Look, stand straight up. Move that body. You need to move that body. Jab works good. You don't lose it now. Jab, jab. Look, he's beating you to the punch every single time. You need to cut the ring off and throw the jab. Round number four is underway. A chance for us to look at Teddy's scorecard. And obviously, the round to circle there, you see the knockdown was scored. And that's how professional boxing is supposed to be. The guy who lands the cleaner, more effective punches, he gets an advantage. He gets an extra score. Do you see any way in which he can take his opponent's aggression and turn it against him? Yeah, the perfect way. I mean, boxing 101, counterpunching. You got a guy coming at you, no better way than to change his mind. Make him miss, make him pay. Good left hand by Andre Bishop. Good double jab by Mike Tyson. Hits him in the mug with the right. Pulls the trigger right away with the left hand after getting tagged himself. Tyson's doing a nice job being comfortable on the outside. Puts forth the hook, scores with it. There's a straight right. Big shot. And he goes down. It was a magnificent combination that put him down. Now he has to get up. Showing you what he is made of, getting up off the canvas after being knocked down. Double up. It's all right. Keep moving. Keep moving. 
Trying to go downstairs, but off target. Banking away those body shots. He gets hit, but he gives it right back. Off to the side, a little swing and a miss going upstairs. That's a razor, and banging away he goes. Tyson goes down. Once again, Tyson goes down. But will he get up again? point to the downfall of Mike Tyson, but few remember. And there's the bell. He is saved by the bell. Oh, boy, Teddy, he's in a world of hurt now, only 60 seconds in front of him. You know what? Less than 60 seconds. It took him five seconds to get him on that stool. So right now, they can't concentrate just on telling him things, and he needs to be told why he got hit. But they got to get ice on him, and they got to right now, they have to revive him. Here we go. Tyson's got to do something different. A start to a new round, maybe the start to a new beginning of this fight. Because what we've seen so far, it's been nothing at all for him. Good block by Andre Bishop that time. We'd like to see more of that. He's showing what a skilled fighter he is with the counter punching. Well, the old times used to say when you calm in there, when you're controlling there, you can make him do what you want. He made him tie his shoelaces right there. A little double jab to the head. That worked out really well. Throwing off the right hand after getting tagged like that. Bishop's left landing well. His opponent wanted the body, he wouldn't give it to him. And now we got a fight. He fires back a right hand of his own. Laying a trap there for a moment in that Solid. Wow, he goes down again. This could be caught the elevator fight. Up and down all night. in the crosshairs of a Never saw the punch coming. Let's get the official particular.
Good evening and welcome to Vegas, where they do it bigger and better than any other city when it comes to the big time fights. We're at the Thomas and Mack Center for a much anticipated main event. 10 rounds of heavyweight action. Great atmosphere here tonight. You talk to everybody ringside and they expect First round underway in this scheduled 10 rounder. Come on! This is what they worked on in training camp. Another good combo by Kobe Nichols. Nichols is able to land a nice clean left hand. Hey, Iron Mike up. now facing a pretty well-rounded, well-schooled boxer puncher here, Teddy. Yeah, a guy that he's not gonna find just by standing there or just walking forward. He's gonna have to cut the ring down going to have to take some air out of the tires, goes downstairs to the basement a little bit. He's going to have to work his way in. He might have to earn it tonight. A knifing left hand by Kobe Nichols. Nichols is jammed by an uppercut. Oh, he took some damage, but he gave some back with the right hand. What an excellent two-punch combo by Nichols. Nichols' right hand scores well. Blocks that punch. What impact from that uppercut by Kobe Nichols. Nichols is right in the way of that hook to the head. Oh, that had a hurt. Mike Tyson's cheek is cut. You can see it's opening up now. Boy, that could be a factor later on. Big shot, the left crash home. Solid. Mike Tyson is on his pants. Iron Mike's got to get back up. Three, four, five, six. So the knockdown scored against Mike Tyson, but his opponent may want to watch out as Tyson has steadied himself back up on his feet. That's a good block by Mike Tyson. Oh, that's got to hurt. Oh, this is going to be close. He may be able to survive the round, but he has gone down now. All right, you got to bring your hands up. You must bring your hands up. Right? Come on, relax. Relax. Here we go, round two is underway. Takes one, gives one, the right hand scores well. Tyson's left now getting into the mix. What a nice combo by Kobe Nichols. Well timed by Mike Tyson. He took a step back, landed the counter. That's exactly what he wanted to do. You don't want to get too far ahead of yourself if you're a guy like this. He scored the knockdown, but it can give you that false sense of security, like everything's fine, right, Teddy? Yeah, exactly. You get a little carried away sometimes, get a little reckless, a little careless. You forget it can turn around real quick. You have to keep defense with that offense. Oh, you see him with the left of the head there? Tyson's the kind of boxer that wants to do just that. Find the target, get the combination working, land both punches. Needs to improve that accuracy, missed with the headshot. They both decide to bring it. And now another left. Blood now. Tyson's been hurt. Wake up. Very nice. Big shot there. What a turn of events. What a turnaround. He scores his own knockdown after being knocked down earlier. And that's where scoring a knockdown hurts you sometimes because now you think he's just going to walk in and get it again. Well, he walked in. He did get it. He got it. Get up. Get up. He gets up after that punch put him down on the canvas. Now he needs to get on that bicycle and stay away from this guy. To the belt line he goes with a left hand. Did you see that? Once 
again he goes down. Can he survive this? Nichols is back up on his feet. Now, what will be interesting to see here is how he reacts in the next few moments. And that's the end of round two. Stand here. Tyson's corner has to keep him calm. That's the kind of cut that can send a fighter into fits. Yeah, and a corner man into using crazy glue instead of adrenaline. I mean, that is a scary cut, as you just said. Nichols has got something to think about now. He just threw a punch and had one coming right back at him. His opponent scored well with the counter. Nichols is nailed by a counter punch. Oh, he just misses with that headshot. Mike Tyson with a big right hand. You see, he's just getting to work now. Good steady work by Kobe Nichols in that jab. Nichols is coming out here after being knocked down in the previous round. How important is it for him to be Hold on solid in. right hand lands? Clinch, clinch. Tyson's in a tough spot here. Move he goes. Speed. What a big shot from absolutely out of nowhere to now on top of the world. He just one, maybe six inches. He couldn't rise up and beat the count. Boxing writers are going to have a field day with this early knockout, Teddy. Praising one guy and Tons of criticism is going to be targeted on his opponent. Yeah, two ways you could criticize his opponent. One is that obviously. Ladies and gentlemen. Hi, everybody. So glad you're with us. Joe Tessitore alongside Teddy Atlas, and we welcome you to the State Palace Theater here in beautiful New Orleans, Louisiana, for our main event. Ten rounds among heavyweights, and the anticipation for this bout has grown as the week has gone on. A lot of talk behind these two. Now it's time to walk the walk. Set on the uppercut, but was unable to land it. Scores big 
with the hook to the head. In a matchup like this, Teddy, we know the outside fighter is going to try to stay away from that power puncher. But what about the outside fighter putting forth his own offense? What can we look for and expect from him? Well, distance will create offense for him. Misses will create offense. What he has to do is allow the aggressive fighter, the power guy, to do some of his work for him. When he tries to get in, make a miss, make him pay. He got hit right there, but he also gave one. Solid effort by Andre Bishop. Reaching the halfway mark of this round. Ali's feeling the effects now of that hook. That's a good job by Bishop offensively. Landing his combinations is a key to victory tonight. Oh, that's good stuff. Fire it right back with one of his own. Good work by Andre Bishop. Right to the body. More than one punch downstairs. That can be damaging. He returns the favor with a right hand of his own. So he digs in with a left hand to the body and then places the right. And we come to the end of round number one. Muhammad Ali is going to really regret when he hears the scorecards, Red, because he lost that last round just based on defensive laziness. Well, you can always make comparisons, analogies. You watch a basketball game and you say, you know what, this team, Joe, is losing because they're not rebounding. They're not boxing out underneath the boards. Well, guess what? They weren't taught how to do that. You have to know how to do that. He's not going to start showing you defense if he doesn't know how. He does not know how. He has not been taught. Andre Bishop's punch is far off the target. That's what Andre Bishop wants to do right there, land the right hand. Well-targeted combination by Muhammad Ali. What a great job. He gave one right back in return. Nice work by Andre Bishop. Here's one for you now, he says, right back with the left hand. Doubling up the jab by Andre Bishop. And coming upon the halfway mark of this three-minute round. How important are these mental gymnastics that Muhammad Ali twists and turns, like his pre-fight antics with Sonny Liston in terms of him getting the results that he wants? Well, I think he looks for two things. It's a double-edged sword. One is that, you know, he can kind of invade the psyche of his opponent, weaken him a little bit. But it's also for himself is to build himself up, to give himself something to aspire to, something to make sure that he lives up to. He puts himself on a spot, a spot that now he has to be sure that he handles. See, Andre Bishop, that training really paid off. Just back to basics with the one, two, boom, boom. Bishop's not just loading up. He's landing combination punches like he did right there. Oh, and he returns fire with a left hand. See, that's some fine defense right there. I love that block by Muhammad Ali. So it's the end of the round. And as both men head back to their respective corners, Teddy, it uh, brings up a good point that's many times not talked enough, but the culture of a corner and how guys conduct themselves. What was always your philosophy in organizing and running a corner? Well, first of all, only one guy could be in charge. That's the trainer. You can't have uh, too many cooks in the kitchen. It has to be organized like anything else. And you have to have calm people. You only have one minute. Maybe by the time the fighter gets back, maybe it's 50 seconds. So you have to be efficient. You can't have guys that are excited. They have to be able to control their emotions just like the fighter does on the outside. And everyone has to know what their job is. Well, he goes to the gut with the right hand. Lands flush with the two-punch combo by Andre Bishop. Now, this is exactly what...
what I love about an offensive fighter, Teddy, a guy who's able to put together the multi-punch combinations and make it look like it's just a sweet science. Yeah, exactly. That's what you can do when you have good fundamentals. Not just good physical ability. That's only part of the equation. But just good technical ability. And that's what he's doing. He's snapping his punches. They're nice and clean. They're crisp. They're short. They're together. Andre Bishop has always had a knack for that. I love the way Andre will look for that uppercut and then deliver it. Right hand followed by a very well-placed left hook to the body. Muhammad Ali with a huge right hand. And now committing to that midsection as the target with the combination punching. Ten seconds to go in this third round. Oh, and he's got something for him himself, and it's a left hand. And the round comes to an end. Just, just, just keep it up. Just keep it up. That's it now, all right? It's nice work out here. Just keep fighting smart. Keep busy. Don't take a break with this guy. You hear me? I want to see you slug it out with this guy, all right? Keep your range, jab, jab, right, okay? Fourth round is underway. Teddy's scorecard reads three rounds to zip against him. You know, I think if you told him before the fight you're going to throw more punches than your opponent, nice work, he'd feel nice good. Work. But right now, it's not working. Well, I think he's looking to take a picture. He's looking to go to a studio and do a photo shoot because somebody should tell him that after you throw a punch, you're not supposed to pose. Comes right back at him with a left hand. Bishop's jab on the outside. That has really been the difference maker here, hasn't it, Teddy? Yes, it has. But the most important thing is, you know, everybody says, hey, just use your jab to control the outside. Hey, jab's a great weapon, but it could be very dangerous. You throw it from a little too close, you could get counted with that right hand. He's throwing it at the perfect distance, getting full extension on that punch. Scored well upstairs with the right hand. Ali's work in training camp is now paying off. Do you see the accuracy and the effectiveness with that combination? Comes right back at him with a left hand. Move! He tried to nab him up top, but was unable to connect. Well struck, solid combination by Andre Bishop. with that headshot. Watch that. Good effective work with that straight right hand. Good smooth work by Andre Bishop. That's classic counter punching. Yeah, what he did was he pulled that right shoulder back. You know, he just pulled it back, side side, gave him the left the shoulder, and then gave him the right hand. Muhammad Ali's inability to get away from his opponent's left hand is so evident. And it's going to stay that way if he doesn't change something. He needs to move the other direction, away from that punch. Tried to land that upstairs and was off the mark. And now he's acting like a fighter. Coming back with the right hand after getting scored upon. Looking good. Good work right there, landing the two punches in sequence by Andre Bishop. Scores up top with a left. Not able to land the headshot. Oh. 
And now the right hand lands because of the work done by the Jazz. That is a big right hand after eating one himself. Ali searching for an answer here, Teddy. He wants to fight on the outside, but nothing's going his way. No, well, the jab is not moving. That's why. Stop moving those jabs. And then all of a sudden, you might see, hey, what a shot. The guy's staying outside. Not what he was looking for. That's a miss right there by Muhammad Ali. Good, solid shots with the combo downstairs. Final 10 seconds of this fifth round. Back to the body, back to the body. Andre Bishop's been as accurate as I've ever seen him, and that's why he's in control. And I don't know if his vision is 2020 or 2030 or whatever, but with a fighter, the reason you're accurate is because you're calm, you don't waste anything, and you have good technique. That is showing right here. It has been completely one-sided so far tonight, and he's in control as we start this round. That's nice work by Bishop there landing the left hand. He gets away from one and then brings it home. Ali's going to get a point deduction here for that clash of heads. The referee now feels that it's purposeful what he's doing, and he's deducting a point. Good clean shot, returning fire. Well done by Andre Bishop. Ali's thinking right now that he's doing a good job defensively, but it's really not the case, Teddy. Every so often, you will see a punch split that guard. Yeah, he's just standing there. First of all, the gloves, he needs to extend them just a little bit away. So as you said, those punches, you know, are going to force their way through to the target, which they're doing right now. They're getting down to it. They're getting through to it. Good combination with a flush left hook to the body and then that right hand. Little head knocking with that right hand. Reaching the halfway point of round number six. Good job! Bishop's jab can do so much there. He used it well that time. Very effective with the block and then the score. Takes one, but gets one. Good work by Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali with the hook. That's a stinging right hand by Andre Bishop. Took a shot, now he gives a left. Looking right hand after he got hit. Final 10 seconds of the sixth round. Scores well to the head with the right hand. Andre Bishop's timing with his head movement has been ideal. We have not seen his opponent being able to land anything clean up top. And listen, no, because his opponent is not making the proper adjustments. You know, when the head is moving, the body's still there. You can't catch the head. Go downstairs to the body, you paralyze that head. You start to take that movement away. Before you know it, the guy's not quite as elusive. Good right hand by Andre Bishop. He needs more of that. Here's a moment here as you see the step back counter punch where you realize this is the sweet science, not just some raw savagery swinging it. Look at the little subtleties here, Joe. What he does is he forces them into a position to stop the punch. And then when he stops, steps back, makes a miss, and comes right back. The right hand wasn't enough. How about that accurate left hook he just landed to the midsection? That's it. That's it. Solid left hand to the head. Big, big shot he just scored with. Muhammad Ali goes down. Ali is down, and his opponent put him there with a precision, perfectly placed power. One, two, three. Muhammad Ali is still in a tough spot here. Don't get fooled just thinking he beat the count and everything's fine. 
and I'm not so sure that he can grab. So what you gotta do now, if you're a trainer, the way you taught him in the gym is, you don't wanna go grab because you might leave yourself open. Move your head when he comes to you, then you grab him. He took a shot, but he came back with a right hand of his own. Ali's got no chance of keeping his opponent off balance. None at all. Oh, he is stunned. He could, and yet another big shot comes in. And he goes down for a second time. Does he have enough this time to rise up and continue on? Muhammad Ali, folks, this is no rope and dope. He's not in good shape right now. Must be the punch of the day. Both guys bringing home uppercuts. There it is! That was a big shot that floored him, and it's a big shot that may end him right here. That looked like the great pitch of Great Maddox. His sinker ball. Boy, it went down quick. It's over. The fight is over. Ali's unable to get up and continue on. That's what you want to see. A guy who can close the show and finish with style. He ends up a knockout victor tonight. And that's what his trainer wanted. His trainer was even telling him, step it up a little. Good evening, everybody. Glad you've made the decision to be with us. Alongside Teddy Atlas, I'm Joe Tessitore. Glad to be bringing you action and welcoming you to the Mexico City Plaza here in Mexico City for our main event of the evening. Ten rounds of heavyweight action. We are looking forward to this fight, especially after seeing what happened at the weigh-in yesterday. A stare down that nearly resulted in a bout breaking out right there. Now they get to do it for real. Kenny, the expectation in a matchup like this, a power puncher versus power puncher, is that the fight's not gonna last long. But what if it does? Then what? A guy with less power is gonna win because he's a guy that has a reserve, a reserve in a place that he's ready to go to in case the power is not there. <laughs> Now they're opening up. Both right hands land. He just missed that shot up top. Halfway through this round. How about a return to center with the left hand? Nice block. Get in there. Well placed, well timed combo up top. A well-placed hook from Mike Tyson. You can see he's trying to score up top, but off the mark there. Flush right hand to the head. Wow! Well, we've seen Mike Tyson in a spot like this before. Remember, he once rose up off the canvas against Buster Douglas, only to be floored again. Can he do it here? Tyson's up from the knockdown, but what we really want to look for is how he reacts in the coming moments of this fight. Well-targeted right hand by Mike Tyson. The 
for a shot. Now he gives a left. Not hitting his mark there going upstairs. End of the round. So he scores the knockdown and now heads back to his corner. Teddy, do you ever have to calm a guy down after he scored a knockdown? That's a really great point because a lot of times that can be the turning point. But not for your guy that scored the knockdown, for the other guy. Because sometimes when you score a knockdown, you start to think it's going to be an easy night. And you forget what you knew when you came in. That wasn't going to be an easy night. You're going to have to bring all the tools out of the tool set. And it's important to remember that. Tyson's going out there after just being knocked down in the last round. If you're standing opposite him, what's the mentality? What's the strategy here? Well, you want to go after him, but you don't want to walk into a trap either. You, you want to kind of size him up a little bit. You want to see if he looks like he's okay, but at the same time, keep in mind that he might be trying to con you. You know you hurt him, so put that pressure on, but do it smart. Off to the side, a little swing and a miss going upstairs. Tyson's damaged by a... Oh! Oh, and he goes down again. The question is, can he rise up and continue on? Mike Tyson rises up after going down here today. Very accurate two-punch combo by Mike Tyson. That's great stuff. He fires one right back after taking one. Gotta love the word by Kobe Nichols. See him timing that double jab to the head. One of the fastest punches in the game. You see how he just turns over that hook. The left hand coming into play by Kobe Nichols. Nichols is hurt. Wow. Oh, a big shot comes up for him. How about that? He goes from being the victim to handing out the punishment. Nichols is back up, but is he back in the fight? We're going to find out in a second whether or not he moves his head. Now, if he just stands there straight and you're the trainer, you better get up on those steps and stop it. He's not right. And round number three is underway. Good jab by Nichols. Able to block that away, it was targeted for his head. Good return fire that time. A little give and take, and here comes the left hand. Needs to improve that accuracy, missed with the headshot. There's that overhand right. Little head hunting with the left. Nice block by Mike Tyson. Double jab by Kobe Nichols. See, he's got his guard up really well that time, and it protects his head. And now he brings the left hand upstairs. Tyson's That's ruined with that in. punch right there. Keep moving. Get out. Look at that. Can you believe that? What a huge punch. You couldn't have seen that one coming. And those are the ones you usually don't prepare for. You prepare for the ones that are more sophisticated, the ones that are a little tighter in the gym. You don't have training for these. Teddy, this is the stuff of legend right now. He is hurt badly, but still he fights on. You know, this is what Custamato, my mentor, used to talk about. He used to say, Teddy, when you got two tough guys, but well, one's a little smarter, or well, then he becomes twice as tough. Oh, he just misses with that headshot. He comes with a straight right hand. Mike Tyson's cut does not look good at all. I get the sense he is not in good shape. He could be on the deck in moments. Oh, what kind of punching is this? Big, big shot comes crashing home. Oh, and 
now the real test. Can he get up after going down a second time? fighter will do well for you and that's the case right now for him as he's up two rounds to one on Teddy's scorecard yeah not always landing a lot you put it very well Joe not always landing a lot but keeping his opponent defensive and keeping him from doing what he wants. big shot Nichols this evening could be over soon folks get back up. Good, enjoyable, entertaining fight it was. For Teddy Atlas, I'm Joe Tessitore saying thanks for being with us. Good evening, everybody. From Joe Tessitore alongside Teddy Atlas, and welcome to the Aragon Ballroom here in Chicago, Illinois, for tonight's main event. Scheduled to go the full 10 if we get that far. Round one underway. We've talked about this time and time again. When you get these two mentalities squaring off against each other, it should be a brawl. Yeah, the old times would say about these guys, they get insulted if you miss them. Able to get away from that headshot with the block. Isaac Frost isn't a one-punch-at-a-time kind of guy. He will throw combinations like that. Accurate shot, straight right hand comes in. Frost doing what every trainer wants to see their fighter do. Land punches in bunches. The combination lands. Teddy, what do you look for early on when you're Finish analyzing the fight of two it, power punches facing off against each other that gives you a clue as to which way this is going? Who's doing the little things a little bit better? Who's using the jab? Who's controlling range? Hey, who's thinking better? Isaac Frost showing you that sublime skill right now with that two-punch combo. He tried to nab him up top, but was unable to connect. Get that head moving. Mike Tyson's tag 
by that powerful hook. Good left hand by Frost. One, two, one, two. Lands flush with the combination upstairs. Isaac Frost able to land a good, solid left hand. Good scoring shot. It was a straight right. Right hand over the top, very accurate with it. Big, big uppercut for Isaac Frost, who's a big, big man. Listen now, you let him work. You let him control his fight. I don't know, I don't know, you know. Here we go, round two is underway. Fine combo there, right hand followed by the left hook. Defense upstairs to stay away from that offensive assault. Mike Tyson's nailed by a huge hook. He missed with that headshot. Oh. How about that left hand? Watch the headshot. Targeting that midsection now with the combo. Good solid right hand by Mike Tyson. Keep moving, keep moving. Thought he had his target, but way off to the side with the uppercut. Good right hand. Good solid uppercut from Isaac Frost, wasn't it? Frost's combination punching is working well here. Tyson showing that he's got some defense of his own. He got away from that punch. Able to dismiss that body shot. Good, strong uppercut. He comes right back with it after taking one. Crashes home with the uppercut. A well-placed overhand right. Let it go. Tyson's coming up with the answers, avoiding that punch. Frost so dangerous with that accuracy. A two-punch combination landing. Able to dismiss it. Mike Tyson runs. And bang, and away he goes. Of course, Mike Tyson has a history with being down, but not necessarily out. Will this be like the first knockdown against Buster Douglas? or the final one. Mike Tyson's rising back up. That takes some guts. Tried to land that upstairs and was off the mark. Tyson's landing a combination here. That's what he does when he's at his very best. Isaac Frost's blocking ability is doing well for him there. You want that round, all right? You want that. Tyson's reached that fork in the road now. You get a moment to breathe, a moment to try to clear your head after being knocked down, and it's up to your mind, your Move body, your disposition as to how do you react and go forward. Hey, 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 let's go! Getting rid of that punch from his opponent. Well blocked by Mike Tyson. Isaac Frost putting his punches together now. That's a nice combination. Digging in with a left to the gut. Just in a big uppercut. He's in bad shape. Solid. He got to Iron Mike. Now Iron Mike needs to get to himself. Find a way to dig deep and climb up off the canvas. Tyson's trainer is thrilled with this. He gets up off the canvas. Now he wants to see how he'll react. Coming to the halfway point of this third round. Isaac Frost's punch didn't come close. It's tough to assess, but Mike Tyson's punch may look worse than it actually is. I mean, all the blood is spraying everywhere. Yeah, and I think that's exactly right. And you just wonder, and I know this isn't supposed to play in, but you wonder if the judges in close rounds, if they get influenced by that look. And that was a fine block by Mike Tyson. Frost just punching air that time. His opponent was able to get out of the way. Little volume punching to the body there. 
opponent dazed and stunned. Isaac Frost lands a damaging blow to the head. Isaac Frost almost looking foolish that time he missed so bad. Stay away from that power, okay? Keep shoulders away from that power. Start of round number four, a chance for us to look at Teddy's scorecard. He's trailing three rounds to zip Teddy. People will be looking at this and say, yeah, but he's throwing punches. But Teddy, it's about throwing clean, effective punches. Exactly. And it's about not standing in front of your opponent after your punch and waiting for the receipt. Well, I don't know if he's hip to the idea of becoming a counter puncher, but I get the sense you'd agree with him. Yeah, definitely. I mean, he's got the perfect platform, the perfect form for it. The guy's walking in right now, not moving his head much. He can time him, he can counter him. Fine looking right hand by Mike Tyson. He missed that uppercut. Good step back counter punch there. A little head hunting with the right. Right hand over the top, very accurate with it. And banging away. Oh, and there you go. How is he going to survive this? Once again, he hits the deck. He's going to have to find a way. Tyson's shaky right now. He survived the knockdown, but I don't know if he can take much more. Right to the head with that right. Right hand over the top, very accurate with it. By sending more than one at him now, the combo. Solid. How is this gonna go on? Once again, he hits the deck. Well, he's getting practice at it. So he might figure it out. Stand, stand, stand. Two, three, four. Let's go, stand up. Get up, get up, get up. It's over, this fight is over. Tyson's unable to continue. This fight is over, knockout. As we saw, he was up on your scorecard throughout the evening. Frost now a winner by knockout. Good evening, everybody. Joe Tessin. When you get a fight like this that everybody's been talking about, it's always so interesting to see these opening moments here in round number one. That's a good left hand by Mike Tyson. Not able to land the uppercut. Keeping his hands up, getting rid of his opponent's offense. Tyson still shaking after feeling that uppercut. Good job on the two-punch combo by Mike Tyson. Threw the straight right hand, but didn't score with it. Able to cover up that gut. Scored well with that right hand to the body. Super two-punch combo by Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson's on the wrong end of a destructive uppercut. Way through round number one. You see, he comes over the top with that right hand, a real solid shot. Good job. It was sudden, it was fast, it was direct by Mike Tyson. Tucks those elbows in, blocks the body shot. Tyson's doing well here with that two punch combination. 
Off the target by Mike Tyson. Tremendous pace being set early on here between these two. Can't see this fight going the distance with this pace. No, not unless something changes, like moving their heads a little bit. Nice work on the right hand by Mike Tyson. Good flush shot upstairs. Oh, what a whiff by Mike Tyson. Left to the body. Come on, get focused. Round comes to an end here. And Teddy, I know you've had a very busy week. You've been training some pro football players this week. There are many parallels to be made between the pro fight game and the pro football. Yeah, there are. You know, physical ones and emotional and mental ones. I mean, the physical ones are when I work with some of these behemoths, you know, like offensive linemen. They have to punch out, you know, with their arms. They have to make sure that they get those hands out now. If they raise their elbows, just like a fighter raising his elbow before he throws a jab, they lose the power. So you gotta teach them to keep those elbows in, punch out without any telegraph, without any loss of power. And also, get those hands out at the right distance. If they're a little late, the big guy gets in on them. And now he can control him. And of course, the mental aspects of it, where they get into those dark rooms we talk about every once in a while where they have to remember that they have control. They can make the choice. You know, you get in those dark rooms, you start to think that you lose control of the choice, that your opponent's making the choice for you. No, that's not the truth. Halfway through round number two. Combination to the head. Mike Tyson's doing a good job of putting his punches together. His opponent's got to be wondering, how do I stop this? Well, right now, <laughs> you, you made a good point there, because right now his opponent is wondering too much. You know, he's just busy blocking the punches, wondering about the combination. He's not getting off. Comes right back with some offense of his own. Great work offensively landing that combination by Mike Tyson. Tyson's showing you a little defensive skill there. I go move away from that punch. And that's what fighters do. Pulls the trigger right away after taking one. That's a forceful two-punch combo by Mike Tyson. A well-placed, gutsy uppercut after being tagged. Tyson's proving to be elusive. Mike Tyson digs deep with a big uppercut. As we come to the end of the round, yes. Joe and Teddy with you ringside. Teddy, that's one of those rounds where I wonder what were the judges looking for because it's tough to kind of draw a line between those two fighters. Yeah, very close, but one of those rounds where you could steal it. You did a little bit more in those last 30, 20 seconds. Maybe that's the impression the judges are left with. He's committing to the work downstairs. He puts forth the right hand. Tyson's combination punching is just perfect there. Three punches landing. Not able to land the headshot. Right there, Mike Tyson was able to score well with the hook. Tyson with a powerful left hand. A snapping combination by Mike Tyson. Committing to the body work now, he lands the right hand. Tyson's putting forth that hard work he did in training camp there, landing a crisp combination. Unable to score with the uppercut that time. He takes a shot and then commits to giving one right back. You had to see it to believe it the first two minutes of these rounds. Now these fighters are trying to make everybody a believer in the final 60 seconds. And this is why you understand the dimension of this sport like no other sport. At the end of this, how both participants will have mutual great respect for each other. Punches and bunches, combination up top. Sends it right back. Tyson's way off the mark. That punch didn't have a chance. That's a fierce left hand that landed by Mike Tyson. The bell rings, signifying the end of the round. 
Tyson's up around here after three rounds on Teddy's scorecard, but really nobody has distinguished themselves to any great amount so far. Look at that combination by Mike Tyson. That's a flush shot, banking away those body shots with the left hand. And you see what he can do when he sends that right to the head. Good way to protect the midsection. Tyson's not firing off the big power punches. I gotta wonder why. Sometimes the guy is making a solid agreement in his mind. He got, oh, that's gotta hurt. You know, when you bully the bully, you can do that right there. Tyson floored by the power punch. Tyson's climb back up from the canvas may inspire him. Wow, look at that, training shot. Both men digging in with uppercuts. He just missed that shot up top. He brings an uppercut that really does damage there. Big shot there. Well, we know he survived earlier, but now he goes down for a second time. Three, four, five. 